welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons make sure you like and subscribe this is a BTEC applied science lesson and it's unit 5 chemistry and it's going to look at enthalpy changes so this comes from learning in A3 and we're going to look at a definition for the enthalpy change here we're then going to move down and we're going to look at enthalpy of combustion formation hydration and the equations that go with those enthalpy changes we will also look at interpreting the size and sign of these values this video will not cover the calculations such as mc delta t which will be carried out in the next video so let's look at some key terms and definitions then so let's look at what enthalpy actually is to start with enthalpy is given the letter capital h so wherever you see capital h that means enthalpy and that is the thermal energy stored within a chemical system so the chemical system could be classed as the reactants in a reaction so we could calculate the enthalpy of the reactants and that would be the chemical system at the start and then we could measure the enthalpy at the end so we could measure the enthalpy of the chemical system in the products now we need to know that the enthalpy is equal to u which is the internal energy plus pressure multiplied by volume now i don't think you'll be asked to carry out calculations with this but you do need to be aware of the equation so when we see this delta this triangle that means change in so the change in enthalpy is equal to the change in the internal energy plus pressure multiplied by the change in volume it's worth noting at this point that we can't actually directly measure the enthalpy of a system what we can do is measure the energy that's released by a chemical system or absorbed by a chemical system so we can actually measure enthalpy changes an exothermic reaction releases energy from the chemical system to the surroundings so we see an increase in temperature because energy has been released by the chemicals to the surrounding an endothermic reaction is where energy has been absorbed from the surroundings to the chemical system so the enthalpy of the chemical system has increased and the energy was taken from the surroundings so we see a decrease in energy and the final point i want to make here is water is a polar molecule which means it has slight charges in it so this is the polar or the polar bonds within water leaving water a polar molecule where we have a delta plus charge on the hydrogen and a delta minus charge on the oxygen that's going to help us when we start talking about hydration values later we can represent an enthalpy change using a graph and that's what we're going to do here notice on the y-axis we have it labeled enthalpy and on the x-axis I've labeled it reaction pathway we could call this the progress of the reaction as well so I'm just going to just pick a random starting point for my reactants there we are so there's my reactants now what I'm going to do here is draw the products at a lower level so there's the products so this means that this enthalpy change is negative energy the enthalpy of the products is lower than the enthalpy of the reactants so the enthalpy has gone down there's a decrease in enthalpy so the enthalpy change which is delta h is negative now that energy has been released to the surroundings so the surroundings would increase in temperature so this would be classed as an exothermic reaction because the enthalpy has decreased therefore the energy of the surroundings have increased and that's an enthalpy profile diagram for an exothermic reaction now I am going to add on here another line to show what actually needs to happen in order for the reaction to take place because the reactants must first of all overcome 
the activation energy. So we can show the activation energy here on an enthalpy profile diagram. So those reactant particles must collide with sufficient energy, and that sufficient energy is the activation energy in order for that reaction to take place. So what does it look like then for an endothermic reaction? Let's think about this. If endothermic energy has been taken in, that means the enthalpy has increased. So I need to show the products at a higher level. This time the enthalpy change, which is delta H, the enthalpy change has increased. It's a positive enthalpy change. So delta H in this case is positive. That means it's an endothermic reaction because the enthalpy has increased and that energy was taken from the surroundings. So the surroundings decrease in temperature. Now, if I was to show my activation energy this time, again, there's a barrier. So from the reactants up to a peak, back to the products. And if I'm going to label the activation energy, I'm going to label from the reactants to the peak of that curve. That is the activation energy. Too many times students will incorrectly tell me that the activation energy is this section here in yellow. And it's definitely not. The activation energy is from the reactants up to the top of that peak. So now we're going to look at some specific enthalpy changes. First off, we're going to start with the enthalpy of combustion. Now the definition for this is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance completely reacts with oxygen under standard conditions. Now let me address the standard conditions bit first. We know it's under standard conditions because of this symbol here. And standard conditions are 298 kelvins, that's the temperature. It's 101 kilo pascals of pressure and any solutions would be in one moles per decimeter cubed. Those are our standard conditions. Now back to the definition. It says the, the key points are when one mole of a substance completely reacts with oxygen. So let's look at some examples then because we need to recognize equations that accompany these enthalpy changes. So first of all, methane. Methane is a gas. It's going to be reacting with oxygen. It will burn completely to form carbon dioxide, gas, and water. Hydrocarbons burn to form carbon dioxide and water, and that's complete combustion. But we need to balance the equation. But when I balance the equation, I must make sure that this methane remains a one because it has to be when one mole of a substance completely reacts. Two here and two here. That balances the equation. The second equation, carbon reacting with oxygen. Now carbon is graphite, it's a solid. Reacting with oxygen, which is a gas, and it has to be complete combustion. So this is going to be carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide. And that equation is balanced. Metals will also react with oxygen. Sodium is a metal, it's a solid. It will react with oxygen to make sodium oxide. Now sodium is in group one. So that's one plus. And oxide is in group six, so that will be two minus. The charge on a sodium is plus one. The charge on an oxide is two minus. Therefore, the ionic formula will be Na2O, and that will be an ionic lattice solid. Now, balancing this is fairly tricky because I've got to make sure that this remains a number one at the front. It's tempting to put a two there to balance the equation, but I can't because as soon as I put a two, it's no longer one mole of a substance, it's two moles. So I must leave that alone. So I'm going to put a half here because a half Na2 is one. So that's one Na. 
it means I've only got half an oxygen. So this is really awkward. I need to put a quarter in front of the O2 because a quarter times two is a half, which matches my half oxygen here. Finally then, the last one is ethanol. Now ethanol is a liquid. It will also react with oxygen and the complete combustion will make carbon dioxide, which is a gas and water, which is a liquid. Now balancing this, I need to put a two, a three, and then balancing the oxygens, I've got four oxygens here. I've got three oxygens here, so that equals seven oxygens on the right. Be careful because there's already an oxygen there, so I need six here, so three or two. And that equation represents the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol. Now what I will point out, at this point is that enthalpy of combustion is always exothermic always going to be exothermic so delta h will always be a negative value so the next enthalpy change is going to be enthalpy of formation and that's delta h f again we can see that it's under standard conditions so what's the definition it's the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is formed from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. Key point here again, it's when one mole of a substance is formed from its elements in their standard states. So let's have a look at some equations. So if I'm going to do the enthalpy of formation of CH4, I must make sure that CH4 is the product because I'm forming it. And I'm going to form it from its elements. The elements here would be carbon graphite and hydrogen gas. That's the elemental form of carbon and hydrogen. Now I need to balance it and this time when I balance it I need to ensure that this remains a one. So I need to form one mole so when I'm balancing I can't change the moles on the right hand side. Balanced. Following the same idea then, I'm going to form one mole of carbon dioxide for the second one, and that will be formed from carbon and from oxygen. It's a very easy one to balance, already balanced. The third one, slightly more difficult, I'm going to form one mole of NaCl, that's an ionic lattice, it will be a solid. It will be formed from its elements, which is sodium metal, and chlorine is a halogen, it's a diatomic gas, it's a pale green gas. Now, again, when I'm balancing this, it's tempting to put a two on the right, but I can't do that. I need to put a half in front of the Cl2 so that you only have one Cl on the left and right. And the third and final one, I'm forming one mole of ethanol. So ethanol becomes a product, it's a liquid, it's going to be formed from two carbon graphites, three H2, that gives me the six hydrogens I need, and that's a gas, and it's going to be half O2 gas. So they must all be elements on the left, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, being careful that the gases are diatomic, hydrogen and oxygen, and then Balancing, I must ensure that I don't change this number. That remains a number one. Third and final enthalpy change then, the enthalpy change of hydration. And given the notation delta H, HYD hydration. And the definition here is the enthalpy change when one mole of aqueous ions are formed from one mole of gaseous ions. What you're basically doing here is taking gaseous ions and surrounding them with water. You're forming bonds with water. So again, it's worth pointing out here that the enthalpy change will always be a negative value. It's always going to be exothermic, just like it was for combustion. That's always exothermic. The previous one on formation can be exo, can be endo. 
Right, let's look at some examples then. We'll look at chloride, sodium and strontium. So chloride is Cl minus. So all we really need to do here is change the state symbol. We're going to go from gaseous to aqueous. That's the first one done. Sodium, being careful that we know the charge. Sodium's in group one, so it will only be one plus. There we go for sodium. Strontium, be careful, it's in group two. It's two plus, remember you do have a periodic table in the exam. So from strontium two plus gas to strontium two plus aqueous. You are simply surrounding it with water, okay? Chance for you to have a go here then. So I suggest you pause the video and you have a go at constructing equations for these six enthalpy changes. I've added something extra in the bottom box where I've asked you to try and predict which one is the most exothermic. Now to give you a clue before you start that, the stronger the bond, the more exothermic it's going to be. When you're ready, unpause the video to see the answers. First one, magnesium solid with oxygen, because this is combustion. This will form MgO solid balance. I need half O2. C2H6 gas reacting with oxygen gas. Complete combustion would form 2CO2 and 3H2O. The balance, we need a three and a half or two, so fractions are needed here. Next one, formation, I'm going to form one mole of Na2O. I'm going to need two sodium metals and half O2 gas. Second one is tricky. I'm going to form calcium hydroxide. From one mole of calcium, which is a metal, it's going to be solid. I'm going to need one mole of O2 gas, because I've got two oxygen atoms on the right, and one mole of hydrogen, H2 gas. That's complete. Finally, the hydration. Magnesium is in group two. It will be two plus, so it's going to go from magnesium two plus gaseous to magnesium two plus aqueous. And calcium, group two also, calcium two plus gaseous to calcium two plus aqueous. But I did add an extra element here asking you to predict which one would have the stronger bonds. In other words, would be the most exothermic change. So in other, will water form stronger bonds with magnesium or stronger bonds with calcium? Now, the first thing I would look for is the charge, because the bigger the charge, the stronger the bond. But they both have the same charge, so that doesn't really help me. Then I'm going to look at the radius of the ion. Now, if I look at magnesium and calcium in the periodic table, calcium is below magnesium, so will be a bigger radius. So magnesium 2 plus will be smaller in radius than calcium 2 plus. That means that the smaller the radius, the charge is more dense. We've got the same ionic charge of two plus, but magnesium is a smaller radius, so it's more dense, the charge density is greater. This means it will be more attractive to water. So the hydration for magnesium will be more exothermic than the hydration for calcium.